The College Hoops transfer portal window is open until mid-May, and while I am dipping my toe into it to find out what's going on, it looks like Chris Beard is already hard at work. We'll explain what we mean right here on the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. You are Locked On Ole Miss, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Lockdown Ole Miss Podcast. I am your host, Stephen Willis. Thank you very much for joining us, and thank you for making the Lockdown Ole Miss Podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Just know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. It's the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Chris Beard is jumping in full-fledged into the transfer portal market. He is going absolutely hard at this, and we're going to have some of those targets. But one of the most important things he is having to do is re-recruit his own roster. Obviously, Jamin Brakefield, um, Deshaun Ruffin, and Matthew Morrell were at the presentation. That's a mighty huge sign. Somebody like Amari Abram, who is in the transfer portal officially now, was not. So it might be a situation where Abram is going elsewhere, but it seems like you have a shot at retaining those three players. And Brakefield turned into a heck of a basketball player by the end of the season. He has length. Everything that Chris Beard would want for a player, I think Jamin Brakefield would do that. Maybe some defensive toughness which Kermit Davis has already instilled that work ethic in them, they have a chance to be pretty special in 2023. Matthew Morrell, he has been rumored for NCAA draft boards for a while. I, I think Chris Beard and a change of scenery would do him well. Deshaun Ruffin, I think, has the potential to be a really good basketball player. And we saw flashes in 2021 before he tore his ACL of exactly what that player could be. It was somebody that nobody could actually stay in front of. Now, an ACL, I don't care about modern science. I don't care what's going on. It's an 18-month injury. It, it just is. You might be able to be able to come back, but you can't come back to the rate you were. It's, it's, it's the strangest thing to where technically your body is healed after like five or six months and you're ready to go and you start doing, but you're not fully back for another year. There's muscle memory and there's all this stuff that has to be taken care of, and that affected Deshaun this year. So will he be able to bounce back? Now, with Chris Beard's love of length, especially defensively, is that a relationship that is going to be a match? We talk about Chris Beard saying, hey, this is about relationship building and basically both sides of where you sit, of where final decisions made. I do not know. I have suspicions, but I do not know. I do know that Deshaun Ruffin, at his best, is unguardable. He can get around where whoever he needs to get around. So we'll see exactly what he does. He was at the presentation. That, that is a good sign. But if you look at the recruiting class currently, I think it was Rashard Marshall, the player from Arkansas, has recon, recommitted um, after backing out of his um, letter of intent. I think he was the player of the year in Arkansas. Tall, lanky, lengthy guy that's a front court player. Um, and the same thing, Jordan Burks has recommitted to the program as well. Um, Gazzo never wavered. He was always coming. Josh Hubbard has committed to Mississippi State. That's where we stand with the Ole Miss basketball program with Chris Beard coming in. Now, from there, you're looking at how you can build your roster because these players are either already signed. It was just about not losing them instead of gaining them. It was... it. It was going to be an easier road than if you were recruiting them from scratch. And what they're having to do right now is recruit some players from scratch. And we'll start off with um, this player. His name is Jalen Tyson. He's from Texas Tech. Good ball player. And I'm bringing up his ESPN page as we speak. He averaged 10 7, 6 1, um, 1.3 assists. He was a decent shooter. Three point average was at 42%. He's a guy that transferred to Texas Tech from Iowa State. And everybody's going to say, wait, 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 you, 
you can only transfer once. You've got the one-time free transfer rule. And right now, until the NCAA proves otherwise, I'm not going to believe that is actually a thing because now instead of the automatic waiver to where you don't even have to think about it, now it goes back to that original waiver process that it seemed like everybody got their waiver. Um, and it says that um, Tyson is between Ole Miss and Texas. Similar systems. Texas Tech ran, runs a similar system to what Chris Beard does because he's the one that installed it there. Texas, the... They run a similar system to Chris Beard there because Chris Beard is the one that st- um, installed it there. So Jalen Tyson it w- would obviously make a ton of sense for him to look to, look to the original. He is six foot six as a guard, two hundred and ten pounds long. Like I said, I said earlier, Chris Beard likes long, athletic players. A six foot six guard would absolutely fit that bill as well. That's one of the questions I have for Deshaun Ruffin. I don't know what's going to happen, but this this long athletic player that Chris Beard recruits, I do not think that we can like turn our nose completely up at that. If that makes sense at all, it, it's just something that is on my mind. It is something that I think we're all going to have to deal with. Now, another player that is going in the transfer portal right now that Ole Miss is recruiting is um, Robert Jennings, also out of Texas Tech. He's a guy that was a true freshman, I think, this year, so he's going to be a sophomore. He's from DeSoto, Texas. He only averaged in the neighborhood of 2.7 and 1.9 rebounds per game. His field goal percentage was not that great. He's a 6'7 player. You know, like I said, long, athletic guys. That's the type player they're going to recruit. Honestly, his best game this year came against the Oklahoma Sooners. Ole Miss played against Oklahoma. He played 23 minutes in that game. Went 2 for 5 from the field, 40%. Um, 1 for 2 from the free throw line, 50% or three for four from the free throw line, um, 75%, and one for two from three. Uh, so that was a pretty impressive thing. He also hit up um, HCU for eight points as well. So he's he, not necessarily a role player. It looks like he played, if you look at his game log, between seven and 13 minutes a game. He, he's one of, the, one of those type players. But obviously played a lot as a true freshman, so there has to be some potential there. So we'll keep an eye on this. Zach Barry, of course, is with on three with the Ole Miss Spirit, so you can check them out there. You guys might notice that um, I have no competition. I don't. I don't view anything. I'll put anybody's tweet up. I'll do whatever I have to do because I, I'm not competing with that person. I don't view myself as doing that. I do something completely different than they do. Um, they do a fantastic job. I think I do a fantastic, fast, fantastic job. So we'll see that. Zach Barry, Ole Miss Spirit. Now, when we come back, we are going to talk about some other players that are looking at Ole Miss or Ole Miss is either talking to them or something like that in the transfer portal. We just did two Texas Tech players in segment one. Now we're going to branch out just a little bit, including some players that are getting a lot of national traction. It's going to be a fight. It's not a slam dunk. Whenever somebody tells you they go into the transfer portal and it's done, that that is not always the case. Sometimes this is an absolute war. Sometimes this is an NIL market. There's so many things. It's not just what transferring was previously. It, it, it's just not. Anyway, today's show is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Hey, we've reached the midway point of the NBA season, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. Because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Yes, I realize that in Mississippi, you have to go to a brick-and-mortar casino to gamble. Uh, but if you visit Memphis, if you visit Nashville, if you visit New Orleans, FanDuel is an option for you as soon as you cross that state line. So it would be a good idea to have that already downloaded and ready to go before you leave. You can bet on everything, anything from money line to point scores to threes drained. 
And plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with same game parlay. I mean, you can, you know, how many threes Steph Curry is going to make, plus how many points somebody else is going to have, plus point spread or money line or something like that. You can parlay them all into a single result. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. Make sure you check out our brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. It has everything you need to know about the college basketball in one place. Plus, you get to hear from big-name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. Both of the hosts of that show have been on this show now. Um, so you know exactly what you're getting into. It's Locked On College Basketball. It's available on iTunes, um, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. All right. We're going to continue our journey into the transfer portal because as Ole Miss fans, I've said this all the time, and Ole Miss has earned this, by the way, absolutely earned this over 100 years. But we are going to dip our toe into the transfer market, and we are going to start treating it more seriously because it now it deserves to be treated that seriously. With Chris Beard being hired, it is now... Not just my, hey, hey, we need to do football every day. We need to force feed basketball into the equation because basketball is going to become more important going forward. It just is. Nothing against football, nothing against basketball, nothing against baseball. But basketball just became more prominent at Ole Miss, period. And the first step, they're going to be able to preach hope for the next six, seven months until the season. But once the season starts, you need to show hope. You need to make sure you put a good product on the floor. You need to market. You need to do all these things early on to create this cauldron that is going to happen slowly over the next couple of years. And part of that is going to be through the transfer portal market. We talked about two Texas Tech players that Ole Miss is in the thick of it for per Zach Barry, per somebody else. Um, somebody else actually said it's between Texas and Ole Miss. So Ole Miss might be further down the road on that one than we even know about. But there's other players that are getting looked at right now, including Miles Sloot from Vanderbilt. Ole Miss has reached out to him. He is um, a, another tall, rangy guy, six foot seven, 215 pounds. He's a forward kind of a wing player, uh, averaged eight and four, almost five rebounds a game, 34% shooter at Vanderbilt this year. He is a senior, um, although one of those years might have been the uh, – no, it's the year after the COVID year, so he, he doesn't have an extra to give. Um, but he averaged 25 minutes a game. He averaged um, about a steal a game. His free throw percentage was in the upper 60s. His three-point percentage in 2021-2022 was close to 45%. He's fairly consistent with his shot totals. I mean, we'll we'll see exactly how that goes. But Ole Miss reaching out to him, they're going to have to fight off Louisville, Arkansas, Nebraska, as you can see, Georgia, Miami, NC State, Howard, Texas A&M. That's, a, that's one to keep an eye on. Um, Eastern Carolina, Georgetown, South Carolina, and Boston. Because South Carolina is actually really, really into the transfer portal market, as you can expect. Um, Lamont Paris, I think that's the coach there, trying to do the turnaround thing as well. Another player that Ole Miss is looking at right now is from Butler, the Butler Bulldogs. Um, His name is Jaden Taylor. He is... Honestly, a pretty good player. If you look at his numbers and everything, you're talking about somebody that's averaged 13 points a game, four rebounds a game, 6'4", 195. There's that length again. We're always talking about that length. And athletic guy that has a chance to come in. He averaged, you know, he's about a mid-30s three-point shooter. I mean, somewhere in there. Um, Free throw percentage is in the high 70s. 
He's a rebounder. He gets assists, block shots, steals about a steal a game. So we'll see exactly what he is. He can do. We'll see. Um, also, his season high this year. He went for. Looks like twenty four was his season high that he got against Georgetown. Now, of course, that's not saying much, but he had a three game stretch against Xavier, where he got twenty. Villanova, where he got twenty, and then he had Georgetown again, twenty one. So good player. Um, kind of looked like he wrecked the Big East a little bit this year, and. We'll see exactly what he does. Now, there's also another player, B.J. Mack, out of Wofford. Um, this player is a really good basketball player, honestly. He's averaging 16 and a half a game, six rebounds a game. He's a 6'8 guy, again, length. But he also has a little bit of weight because he's filled out a bit. Um, but he would be like a fifth-year senior type player. So this would be a grad transfer. But there are some big boys that are fishing and swimming in this pond. I mean, you're dealing with Michigan. You're dealing with those guys that are going after this one because he's a high ceiling player. These are all players that have been mentioned with Ole Miss either reaching out to them or them reaching out to Ole Miss. These are five players that you need to keep an eye on, honestly. Um, Because at the end of the day, they are the type of players that Ole Miss is going to bring in. Even if even if Ole Miss doesn't sign one of them, you can see what they're recruiting. That gives you a framework of what an Ole Miss basketball player is going to look like. Because honestly, until we get that first commitment, we don't know. It's absolutely nuts to think about, but we don't know. Anyway, today's show is brought to you by Built Bar. Built Bar March Madness Bracket is here. We know you have a favorite bar or puff, and now's your time to make it count. Go to BuiltMarchMadness.com to vote for your favorites. I know you'll be voting for the Double Chocolate Built Bar. Uh, that's my favorite. And you want if you want your team to be successful in the NCAA tournament to win, you'll be voting for that bar too. So support your team. Support Bar or Puff. And when you vote for the your favorite bar or puff, you'll be entered into a drawing where 50 lucky Locked On listeners will get a free box of Built. That is good. Those 13 bar boxes, they are filling. They're sitting in my refrigerator right now, and they're delicious, and they are just perfect for that in case of emergency stomach growling situation. But not only that, one Locked On fan will win a 12-month subscription to Built to have Built's best bars or puffs delivered monthly Straight to your door. You got to try Built. Built is the best protein bar ever. Seriously, they're so amazing, you won't think they're good for you. What makes Built Bars and Puffs so good? Well, for starters, they're all high in protein, low in sugar, covered in 100% real chocolate. And that's right, real chocolate. So run to BuiltMarchMadness.com right now to vote for your favorite bar or puff and pick up a box while you're there. You can vote every day in March. So hop in and Support your pick. Tim Thomas next. All right. Thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. So subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell for notifications, upvote the video, and comment as well. Also, you can see in the top corner, join our subtext community and have Ole Miss information sent directly to to your phone. No more hanging out around a message board. When something happens, it'll be sent to you. That's pretty cool indeed. I'm here with a former player, Tim Thomas, um, with the news that Chris Beard got hired. First impressions. He wants to play on Monday night. And Monday night means you've already, he's not going to just be NCAA every year. He's talking about getting to the Final Four and then playing on Monday night. That's his goal. His goal ain't to just get to the dance. And, you know, every year, hope we get to the dance. If not, we go to NIT. That's Ole Miss basketball in the past. We've every once in a while got, you know, into the dance, you know, and maybe lasted a couple rounds. But a lot of times we end up being NIT or whatever. And that, that's kind of the uh, past. So I, I think it's the past. I was thoroughly impressed. Uh, you know, there's a lot of the – People out there, social media, national media, going to slam this hire, going to say this and that, whatever. I go to the Bible. I'm a church man. Uh, I hope you are. Uh, John 8, uh, Jesus was talking to the adulterous woman. 
and he went through a lot of things and marking in the, in the, in the, on the ground and there, and all these people had their stones in their hand. They were going to stone her. He said, he who is without sin cast the first stone. We as people sin, we do things we don't like and we do them, you know, that's life. So I'm going to give him a break. I'm going to say, Hey, he's asked forgiveness. He's been humbled. He's been, uh, he's made, made amends to his family. He made amends to his, his players, his former players, the coaches. I got a lot of respect for him. Uh, what he said tonight during the news conference, the question and answers, and also in the, uh, the thing with, uh, Keith Carter, I, I was very impressed. Yeah, and his um, contract information came out today, and I think it's at like $3.25 million a year. So the altercation and whatever happened in Texas ended up costing him about 8 to $10 million. And before people say he cost himself that, well, the same thing, whether they tell you to pay it with a fine of doing it or somebody removes you punitively from your job, that is punitive damages that has happened. I mean, that has to be taken into account. It's not a situation to where you can just have somebody and just like, okay, this is a bad person. He's always going to be a bad person because life doesn't work that way. And I, yeah, I, I don't want to talk about this anymore, but I mean, it, it just kind of is what it is. Money's important to all of us. We got to have it to get by. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I could tell, you know, he, he wants as much money as he can make, you know, for his family, his three daughters. Um, I don't think it's all about the money. I think he's happy to be at Ole Miss. He's happy to be in SEC. He's happy to be the coach of the Ole Miss basketball. I think he's thrilled. Uh, Ole Miss is special. Uh, Ole Miss, uh, Oxford is special. Uh, Keith Carter. Wow, did he go out on a limb and make this hire? This is a big hire. This is a whale. It's not this is a whale among minnows, man. He he went out and, and he loves Ole Miss. He loves Ole Miss sports. But you gotta admit it, he loves Ole Miss basketball because he played here, you know, put his sweat and tears all these years. So he 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 wanted to make a big hire. And some people say, well, he'll play for a while or he'll stay for a while. I'm sorry, he'll stay for a while and then Someone else bigger, bigger, bigger. That may happen. Now, I just think, like with Kiffin, what did Lane, what Lane Kiffin was thinking about going to Auburn? What did Keith Carter do? He put, he put nine, nine to ten million. I think it's around nine million uh, dollars on him, and he stayed. So I think it'll be the same way with the Beard if he's successful. You know, let's change gears to actually Beard on the court and talk about it. And I am not overly familiar with the style, but I do know that Chris Beard is a disciple of Bobby Knight, and I know how he played. Now, he does something he calls the no-middle defense, which appears to be some sort of a man-to-man -man with zone principles, kind of like a matchup type deal. Uh, but but talk about that system. Like, you played under Bar Bob Weltlick, who was also a Bobby Knight disciple. What What is in store for Ole Miss basketball moving forward um, with the program? As he said, mentioned it several times in interviews, he defense is king, and he knows how to teach it. He knows talent. He can judge talent like anybody I hadn't seen. It. I mean, it's like at Little Rock. First year there and only year there, they were 30 and 5. How does that happen? How do you do that all in one year? And he pretty well promised that. I, I'm going to take him up on it. We're going to be in the NCAA tournament next year. He And, and I, I'd say within a few years, we're going to be towards the Final Four. I, I believe that. I got faith in him. You know, I've been proven wrong, and the people said stuff. I believed them, but uh, I've seen his track record. You looked at it. You went over to the other day on, on this show. You went through all the years and all the wins and the 70% winning procedure, uh, percentage. But like you said, he uh, he's going to most likely all man-to-man, -man, but there will be a zone like you were talking about. It. Uh, I think at Ole Miss, when we were, I was there, we did a 2-3 zone we had some traps too that we did but uh the main thing is it's a zone but with man principles so if someone's in your area you're all over them and a lot of times I, what i've seen he's going to trap some too that's where he's going to make it serious but he, he has a good offense though he uh it's a motion type offense but he he really lets the kids play uh he does something that we've talked about kermit uh he don't jerk them out all of a sudden. He don't just he gives them a chance to play, a chance to get used to playing. The, you know, put you in a few minutes, and give you a chance to settle down and, and get used to playing. And uh, I think that's I think that's why he's really good at recruiting 
because they see the the guys and he sent a lot of people to the pros so he, he he's that type of coach that the kids these days really like like to play for yeah whenever you hear him speak it automatically comes out how sharp of a guy he is and you could tell that he would probably be a recruiting dynamo and speaking of that um within the first day of being hired he got people that requested their NL, um, NLI um, being rescinded with the kid, the Marshall kid out of Arkansas and Jordan Burks out of Arizona. They are going to honor their signee. They're going to be at Ole Miss. Now, Ole Miss did lose Josh Hubbard, the kid from MRA, who's going to Mississippi State. But to quickly turn that around, that is kind of impressive. And if you look at the transfer portal, there's a – Power forward from Wofford that's an excellent shooter that is showing up that uh, has already mentioned that Ole Miss has contacted him. And a young freshman from Texas Tech who this year didn't have the greatest numbers, but you're seeing the front court. Chris Beard has obviously came in, looked at the players on hand, looked at what he has, and is like, no, we need front court scorers. And that that is kind of the early impression of the transfer portal um, at the moment. Yeah, let's be honest. He's been working on this since Thursday or Friday. He knew that he was going to be the coach, in my opinion. They didn't finalize it till Monday to put it out for everybody to see. But he's been working behind the scenes with the film crew and with everybody that he could get from the staff there. He's been going over every player on Ole Miss's team that's coming back. He knows who he wants. He knows who fits in the system. So when, in this next week, when you see these names coming up and whatever – uh, don't come back, it's probably because he didn't want them. I'm just being honest. He he can decide who he wants. You know, Brakefield and uh, White and who else is in there? Abram, they're all in the portal right now. So he's going to watch their film, talk to them, and see what they made out of and go over some scenarios and he maybe even let them practice and see. But he, he's, he's, uh, he's been vetting and doing due diligence on the players that he's got at Ole Miss, and, and he's definitely going to get in that portal and he's going to get serious, and he knows how to judge talent like nobody I've ever seen. Yeah, Matthew Morrell, Jamin Brakefield, and Deshaun Ruffin were at the announcement today. I saw, um, I saw these. Yeah, so that's kind of a big deal and probably gives everybody a hint of what's happening because if Jamin Brakefield was truly out the door going into the portal, he would not have come to that announcement. If Ruffin was out the door, he would not have come to that. And with Matthew Morrell, I think under the Chris Beard system, a morale type guard could actually flower a little bit, kind of do the stuff that we were waiting on him to do that he was unable to do last year. And they were also clapping. So that's a good sign mm-hmm. that they were clapping when he would make a statement. And he also, uh, he, he knows how to handle a crowd too. He, he thanked everybody from uh, the guy that mows the yard around the Lyceum to the staff person there at Bavia, which is great. He, he's got input and he's got people buying in. He said something about Coach Yo and all the other coaches, Bianco and, and Kiffin. He mentioned all that. He wants to buy in. He wants everybody to love Ole Miss basketball. He, he bought me in. I had mm-hmm. goosebumps all over. I, I might have said I, I wouldn't say it. I might have shed a tear because it, it really means a lot to me and all the other guys. And you too. Everybody that went to Ole Miss, you feel strongly. You won't ever sport to do well. You may be football oriented, but you want basketball to do well. You want baseball to do well because when you go out in the public or wherever you go to church, whatever, you, you know, you want to let them know that you know Ole Miss won Saturday. Ole Miss is in the dance, not if they're going to be in the dance. Well, how, how, what are they ranked this year? What are they ranked? Oh, they're in the top ten. This ain't just uh, you know the top 50, 60, 80, 100. He wants to be in the top ten and be relevant. Ole Miss will be relevant. In the, in, the, in the basketball arena these coming years. I think it's going to be next year. Yeah, and honestly, he wants to build up to the point where Coach Yo is now. She was always going to be an eight seed. I mean, she's the higher seed. She needs to beat Gonzaga. She needs to advance in the tournament. But that's the stage she's in at the moment. She's getting in. She just needs to advance. Now, with Chris Beard, that's going to be the same thing. I'm, I, my expectations for this year is Ole Miss firmly in the conversation for the NCAA tournament in year one. Period. I'm expecting Ole Miss to have a season similar to what Vandy did. I think early in the non-conference slate, there could be a little bit of trouble while they're starting to gel and everything that could drop some games. But by the end of the year, this team is going to be good. This team is going to be tough. And they're going to sell out the pavilion multiple times. And nobody's going to talk about the the stuff that led 
previous to this hire. They're just going to be talking about the product that is on the floor, the energy that's in the crowd, the fact that Ole Miss basketball, for the first time in 100 years, is really relevant. We always talk about, you know, this was a passion, passion project for Keith Carter. And we say that and nobody really believed it. But you could hear when Keith was talking about it, how much this hire meant to him. Being a former basketball ball player, the same as you. It, and it, it just makes me feel good. There's been moments like in the 80s when Gerald Glass was going for 55 or 52 or something like that. Or when Keith Carter and Rob Evans kind of turn this team around or even whenever like Marshall Henderson and Murphy Holloway was making a run a few years later, but the moments have been so few. I basically, other than the 81 team, I basically just said the whole history of Ole Miss basketball. Now, hopefully with Chris Beard and the turnaround here, you'll see this team start to go around the corner and they'll start to turn that corner and all of a sudden it will be relevant. Football will be relevant. And honestly, basketball being relevant means that not as much money has to come out of football to pay for it. You need basketball to be the moneymaker that it's designed to be. I believe it will be. I'm, I'm with you. I, I believe the fan support's going to be there. He loves to do promotions. He loves to get the kids involved. I love the students. He mentioned them. Uh, they're on spring break. I'm sure a lot of them are watching this. The Club Red, they call it. He's a he's really a promoter. He, he loves to get the community, Oxford, involved. There was a good crowd there today. Uh, he, he's he's going to get some great players in here. He's, he, this is going to be uh, – you see some of the uh, stadiums or coliseums around uh, that is packed. The kids are everywhere. They're screaming. They're jumping up and down like a duke, maybe. You know, this is going to be like that. This is going to be – it's going to be quick. This is going to be soon. This is not a – you know, he said rebuild. Of course, you rebuild your, your roster every year. But this is not going to be a rebuilding year. There's – Plenty of talent. We, I saw Ruffin in the audience like you did. He was sitting there. So there was Morrell there and Brakefield there. So you got several pieces. I don't know what's happened to Cal Hurd. He was red-shirted. He's supposed to be a great shooter, but he was a great shooter. Uh, maybe he wouldn't have been red-shirted. But I don't know if he'll be back. But you got the Abram kid. You got the guys, uh, Brakefield, that like we mentioned, and James White. He's going to talk to all of them. They said they would talk to him. I feel good about the whole thing. He's going to get good assistance. We've heard of uh, a couple of names, uh, Brian Berg, I've heard he's definitely coming. Hmm. He was the coach at Georgia Southern. I think he was just let go recently. And I've heard another name that's uh, been on uh, his, st- his staff at Texas Tech and Al Pinkins. You, I think he brought his name up. He's a possibility. I think he came in for interview. And nothing to done deal until you guess you see it on paper. But he, he's going to surround him stuff with people that can recruit and can recruit well and also can teach the game. He is big into teaching. That's what he mentioned about Bobby Knight. Bobby Knight wasn't actually a coach. He was a teacher. He loved to teach basketball, and and sometimes he would get a little crazy sometimes in some of the games and threw the cheer across. But I guess that was a teaching moment. I don't know. But uh, I, I, I believe we're going to do well. I, I can see it happening next year. I really do. Yeah, and, you know, I think the third – I think it's three assistants with the head coach. So you've got – you're going – I think you're going to have Berg. You're going to have Pinkins. And I think that third person might be Win Case. Yeah, that's a good point. Go ahead. Yeah, I, yeah, I, th- I think that might be the one and that'll be the person that is the glue with Jamin Brakefield, with Matthew Morrell, and kind of give him a little bit of a push in year one. We'll see if it will work out because – I mean, let's be honest, like with Bobby Knight and like with Bob Weltlick, there's a certain way that they coach and not all assistant coaches are designed for that way. So we'll be able to see then, like if Wynn comes in for a year, he can head out after that year. But that is kind of how I think the staff might turn out. Makes sense. If Wynn wants to stay, if he's not trying to get a job somewhere else, a coaching job, I'm not sure. But it makes a lot of sense. With it. He probably was a big, big, probably the biggest recruiter for Morrell and Brakefield, those guys. So they love him to death, and they want him to stay. And I heard a statement, a rumor, you know, these rumors. If uh, Win K stays, I'll stay, you know, that type of stuff. I don't know if that's true. But I'm sure some of that goes along because you, you feel comfortable with someone like Win K. He won two games, you know, there real quick, like – and. He, he seemed like a great man. I enjoy listening to his press conference. You, you know, the, the players love him, so that's a big 
that's a big plus for uh, Beard right there to have someone and knows the area, knows Mississippi, Tennessee, Georgia, these areas, and, and we and it's a super guy. You know, and, and the weird thing to say is like Brian Berg, I, I'm not really sure exactly what his specialty is. I know he's probably going to be the number two on the bench. I know that um, Chris Beard is going to lean on him because they were together at Little Rock. They were together at Texas Tech. I mean, they've they've got real history coming up together. Um, Al Pinkins, I know, is a big big man coach. I I, uh, I know that he helped Reginald Buckner. I know that he helped Murphy Murphy Holloway. He was here with AK. So I'm understanding what Pinkins is. Now I, I don't really know is Win Case a front court guy or is he a back court guy? Because if he's a back court guy, this is a slam dunk. You've got the number two on the bench. You've got Pinkins as the big man, and you have somebody to coach the guards. But maybe I'm just thinking, you know, I'm I'm just trying to connect dots that aren't there. Yeah, I think Win Case is the backcourt guy. I think he does handle the guards, and we'll, we'll see. You know, Beer says he wants people all around. They won't be, you know, they won't be recruiters. You know, got to be recruiters. You know, he wants to be able to coach on the floor. He wants them to be able to. He wants to be able to coach as good as he, he wants to follow instructions. And uh, I don't know who's going to be there. We think Berg is definitely coming. Pinkins maybe, and the Win Case. We'll see how that turns out, but. Everything looks good. I, I'm proud of how it went today. I think everybody will be. There'll be people out there saying what they want to say, but go ahead and say it. Uh, in the 24 or 48 uh, news cycle, it'll be all over with. And then we'll wait for Beard. Like he said, he's out on the recruiting trail. He's already hit a couple of recruits. Uh, Hubbard, maybe that was best for him. And maybe that was best for Beard that he went on. He's got Ruffin coming back. I mean, we hadn't talked about Malik. Ewing. I'm not sure what's going to happen with him. I don't know what the latest. I didn't see him in the crowd, but we'll, we'll find out. He may want him back because he's a big old kid that plays well inside and can really score. So if he is available, I bet he'll get him too. But it's going to be uh, some great months coming up, and I'm looking forward to the new year. Of course, we got baseball tonight right now. As we're recording, uh, uh, they're playing Jacksonville State. I hope they're doing well. And we got the spring uh, coming up here soon. So it's going to be a, it's a great year for Ole Miss. Yeah, absolutely. And and it might be nothing. This is, could be me just completely talking out of school and not knowing what I'm talking about, okay? I understand that. This is just my opinion of me doing two weeks worth of research on Chris Beard and becoming an expert on him like everybody else. But Josh Hubbard, kind of a sawed-off player. Deshaun Ruffin, a sawed-off player. It is known that Chris Beard likes length. He likes long guards. So... If you want to connect dots with Josh Hubbard, you have to think that phone call was made and it probably didn't go the way that you think it was going to go. I mean, it, you know, I, I think he would want, I, 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 was, I was really smart, I think, whenever I said that TJ Caldwell could have a real significant role with this team moving forward. Um, with him with Matthew Morrell, that would be the type court as far as the size speed ratio kind of that he normally puts out, in my opinion. Yeah, Caldwell, like you said, he is a great player. Very athletic, uh, jumps really well, and he's a good outside shooter. So we'll see. Uh, Beard knows who he wants. Uh, he's going to have these interviews if he hasn't already had them with most of them. He'll decide who he wants and who he's got to get. He wants to get the players that he feels like can play on Monday night. That's his key. That's what I loved about the whole day today. So he, he's got Brakefield in mind, Morrell, I'm sure, because he's definitely – He's definitely there. He's got to get him. He needs him bad. And I, I think, like you, I think he'll keep Win Case and hopefully that Bird guy. That they're all out right now. That would never. They probably wasn't there to at the press conference. They were probably out recruiting. They're out getting all these portal. I think it was nearly two hundred people that got in the portal on Monday. So it, there's a lot of people out there. And I think that Chris Beard, the way he handles kids, the way he talks to them, I believe he's going to get his line share. And I, I believe we're going to be very relevant uh, next year. All right, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this video up on Tuesday night um, as soon as possible, but it's also going to be Thursday's Locked On Ole Miss podcast segment three. Instead of waiting until Thursday, I'm going to go ahead and shoot it out as well because Tim always gives good information. He's just a good listen. I do appreciate it, Tim. Um, thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. Make sure you check out our brand new podcast, Locked on college basketball. It has everything you need to know about college basketball in one place. Plus, you get to hear from big-name experts, insiders, 
Coaches and Players. It's Locked On College Basketball. It's available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Tim, thank you very much for stopping by. Always good to talk to you, man, and get your opinion on this. And as the season ramps up, we'll start doing it again, buddy. Yeah, I like Chris Beard. He led the cheer. Are you ready? It was pretty awesome. They did the <laughs> are you ready when he was coming up, and then he led the cheer. I thought that was pretty awesome. So are you ready? I think we. I think he's ready. I think uh, Ole Miss basketball is ready for uh, unprecedented success in Ole Miss basketball. That's where I'm at. Yeah, that's that's where we're, we're all hoping for. But we'll we'll see you a little bit later on this year. Take care, Tim. God bless. Howdy, tighty, buddy. Howdy, buddy.